huge news to share with you today. This is in regards to the court case with the CEO of SafeMoon, John Caroni. In new court filing documents, it appears that they're suggesting he could be facing up to 45 years in prison without bail. So we're gonna dive more into that in just a moment. If you want to stay up to date with this, then hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up like button as well. It's greatly appreciated. And also you can join my Telegram group. There is a link down in the description below. We're really close to hitting 100 members and I would love to have you guys be a part of that. That's Team Crypto Atlas, link in the description. That being said, let me go ahead and hide my webcam here. Go back over here and go ahead and continue on. This posting is a little bit more readable from SafeMoon Fabo. I do want to point out that it looks like it was originally posted by DeFiStella.eth. Uh, that's the earliest that I can seem to find. So shout outs to DeFiStella for doing this. It's just a little bit easier to read on the SafeMoon Fabo post. So here we go. U.S. Department of Justice, United States Attorney, Eastern District of New York. The Honorable Eric R. Committee, United States District Court, Eastern District of New York, gives you the address. Regarding United States versus Braden John Caroni, dear Judge Committee, the government respectfully submits this letter in advance of the defendant's November 8th, 2023 detention hearing in the District of Utah, seeking the detention of the defendant, Braden John Caroni, who together with his co-defendants and other co-conspirators conducted a series of fraudulent schemes through SafeMoon US LLC or SafeMoon, a crypto issuer of digital SafeMoon tokens or SFM over the course of approximately 15 months in 2021 to 2022. The defendant is charged with one count of securities fraud conspiracy in violation of 15 U.S. Code Section 78J and 78FF and 18 U.S. Code Section 371, one count of wire fraud conspiracy in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section uh, 1343 and 1349, and one count of money laundering conspiracy in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 1956H. The defendants, including Caroni, fraudulently diverted and misappropriated tens of millions of dollars worth of victims' funds for personal benefit. Because the defendant has significant foreign ties, including that since April 2021, he has primarily resided in the United Kingdom and traveled to other international locations and can access digital assets and uh, dissipate victim funds from anywhere in the world. He is a grave risk of flight and danger to the community. Therefore, he should be detained pending trial. Then it has a little footnote here. An assistant United States attorney in the District of Utah will provide content contained in this memorandum to the Honorable Daphne A. Oberg, who is presiding over the defendant's detention hearing in the District of Utah. The government will apprise this court of the result of the defendant's detention hearing and follow up with additional submissions as appropriate. One. Background. Offense conduct. As alleged, the defendant, together with his co-defendants, Kyle Nagy, Nagy, Thomas Smith, Smith, and other unindicted co-conspirators, were the developers and other principals of SafeMoon, a crypto project that offered and sold SafeMoon tokens, SFM, digital assets traded on a blockchain, to investors based on various material misrepresentations and emissions. Those misstatements included a promise that SafeMoon would enrich investors by, among other things, imposing a 10% tax on every purchase and sale of SafeMoon that would inure to invest, uh, investors. SafeMoon promised investors that half of the 10% tax would be paid back to investors in reflections, i.e. quasi-dividends, and the other half would be sent to, quote, locked liquidity pools that would increase liquidity in SafeMoon and thus benefit investors by allowing them to more easily trade SafeMoon. SafeMoon also promised investors that SafeMoon would be a quote deflationary token and that SafeMoon would decrease the supply of SafeMoon over time by quote burning SafeMoon on the Binance smart chain. In reality, the defendant, his co-conspirators and others perpetrated a series of fraudulent schemes to defraud current and prospective SafeMoon investors by retaining access to the purportedly, quote, locked 
liquidity pools, which allowed them to intentionally steal millions of dollars worth of SafeMoon and other tokens for their personal benefit. The defendant, his co-conspirators, and others did so, notwithstanding their repeated public denial that they personally blockaded, uh, that they personally held or traded SafeMoon. The defendant then laundered the SafeMoon and other tokens through various blockchain wallets and ultimately liquidated them too, among other things, by an approximately $2 million home in Utah. You can see a picture of that down below. And a luxury vehicle, fund personal investments, and pay for his international travel and lavish living expenses in the United Kingdom. The following is a picture of the 8,000 square foot, six bedroom, and five and a half bath home the defendant bought with approximately $2 million in stolen investor money. So we have the official photo of the house, six bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, 8,000 square feet, $2 million price tag. Wow. By the way, I have a little bit trouble trying to see some of the words because I'm trying not to get too close to the microphone. So I apologize if I do stumble a little bit as I'm trying to read this, guys. Notwithstanding his purchase of the residence as described in detail below, the defendant has not resided consistently in the United States. Indeed, the defendant is due to close on a sale of the residence in December 2023. I want to stress that again. The defendant is due to close on a sale of the residence in December 2023. So he was looking to sell this property. As noted, the defendant used a series of digital wallet addresses accessible from anywhere in the world to perpetrate these frauds and then launder the proceeds of his crimes. Those wallets may contain victims' funds. The defendant may access, maintains access to those funds, which are accessible only with private alphanumeric keys in the defendant's possession. The instant indictment and the defendant's arrest. On October 31st, 2023, a grand jury sitting in the Eastern District of New York returned an indictment charging the defendant and his co-defendants, Nagy and Smith, with one count of securities fraud, conspiracy in violation of 15 U.S. Code Section 78J, 78FF, and 18 U.S. Code Section 371. One count of wire fraud, conspiracy, in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 1349. And one count of money laundering, conspiracy, in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 1956H. That same day, the court issued an arrest warrant for the defendant. The defendant was arrested in the evening of October 31st, 2023 at Salt Lake City International Airport after arriving from a flight from Miami, Florida. The defendant previously flew from London, England to Miami, Florida on October 27th, 2023, the first time he has been in the United States in almost five months. The defendant had a ticket to return to the United Kingdom on November 8th, 2023. The defendant has significant ties and consistently traveled between the U.S. and U.K. since April 2021. The defendant is engaged to a citizen of the United Kingdom who resides in the United Kingdom, and the defendant planned to get married in the United Kingdom. The defendant has resided primarily in the United Kingdom since SafeMoon's launch in March 2021, with only brief travel to the United States for significant events. In fact, after the government subpoenaed a witness in the case who informed the defendant's co-conspirators, including co-defendant Kyle Nagy, of the subpoena, defendant Caroni traveled to the United Kingdom in June 2023, only returning on October 27, 2023, more than 20 weeks later, for a memorial service and civil court appearance. Even then, the defendant was due to be in the United States for less than two weeks. Around the same time, Caroni left for the United Kingdom. Co-defendant Kyle Nagy fled the United States and remains at large. One of the things that I find interesting is that they're not really indicating where Kyle Nagy may have gone. Did Kyle Nagy go to the United Kingdom? Did he go to South America, to Asia? Do they know that information? They don't want to release it publicly because they don't want to give any indication that they may know where he's going. Um, we don't really know. It's not being identified here. In addition, the defendant applied to renew his passport at the United States Embassy in London in August 2023. 
Notably, at the time of this renewal, the defendant's existing passport remained valid until October 2029, thus raising the question whether the renewal was sought for any reason other than to allow him to travel internationally with a valid passport without the need to return to the United States for a longer period of time. Legal Standard Under the Bail Reform Act, Title 18 United States Code Section 3141, at SEC, federal courts are empowered to order a defendant's detention pending trial upon a determination that, quote, no condition or combination of conditions would reasonably assure the appearance of the person as required and the safety of any other person and the community. 18 U.S. Code Section 3142E, a finding of dangerousness must be supported by clear and convincing evidence. See United States versus Ferranti 66 F 3D 540 542 2D circa uh, 1995. A finding of risk of flight must be supported by a preponderance of the evidence. See United States versus Jackson. It gives you the code. See also United States versus Abu Hamra. It gives you the code. The Bail Reform Act provides for a detention hearing in any case that involves, quote, a serious risk that the defendant shall flee. ID. 3142F2. After the hearing, if a judicial officer concludes that, quote, no condition or combination of conditions will reasonably assure the appearance of the person as required and the safety of any other person in the community, such judicial officer shall order the detention of the person before trial. It gives you the code. I'm not going to keep reading the codes. It's happening so much. The Bail Reform Act lists four factors to be considered in the detention analysis, whether for risk of flight or dangerousness. Number one, the nature and circumstances of the crimes charged. Two, the history and characteristics of the defendant. Three, the seriousness of the danger posed by the defendant's release. And four, the evidence of the defendant's guilt. Gives you the code. See also United States versus Jacobson. In detention proceed, uh, proceedings, Evidentiary rules do not apply, and the government is permitted to proceed by way of proffer, among other means. See the code. See also United States versus La Fontaine. Government entitled to proceed by proffer in detention hearings. Ferranti, United States, gives you a bunch of these different ones. Uh, as the circuit, Second Circuit has explained, in the pretrial context, few detention hearings involve live testimony or cross-examination. Most proceed on proffers. So United States versus La Fontaine. This is because bail hearings are, quote, typically informal affairs, not substitutes for trial or discovery. Indeed, Section 3142F2B expressly states that the federal rules of evidence do not apply at bail hearings. Thus, courts often base detention decisions on hearsay evidence. Part three, the court should detain the defendant pending trial. For the reasons discussed below, the defendant cannot establish that he does not pose a flight risk or a danger to the community if released pending trial. For that reason, no combination of bail conditions will ensure the defendant's continued appearance before the court and safety of the community. As such, the court should issue a permanent order of detention. Okay, we have a little bit more here. Risk of flight. All four Bail Reform Act factors weigh in favor of the conclusion that the defendant poses a serious risk of flight. The nature and circumstances of the charged crimes, securities fraud conspiracy, wire fraud conspiracy, and money laundering conspiracy are extremely serious. Indeed, these crimes defrauded the defendant's victims of hundreds of millions of dollars. And if convicted, the defendant faces a potentially lengthy sentence. The defendant faces up to 45 years imprisonment if convicted on all three counts. The wire fraud and money laundering charges each a statutory maximum sentence of 20 years imprisonment, and the defendant faces up to another five years for securities fraud conspiracy. The Second Circuit has held that the possibility of a severe sentence is an important factor in assessing flight risk. See United States versus Jackson. Gives you more. Defendant was a flight risk before her knowledge of the seriousness of the charges against her gave her a strong incentive to abscond. United States versus Townsend, facing the much graver penalties possi uh, possible under the present indictment, the defendants have an even greater incentive to consider flight. 
The defendant's history and characteristics, most notably his ties abroad, travel history, recent passport renewal, and access to digital assets from anywhere in the world, demonstrate that, if not detained, he presents a grave flight risk. The defendant has frequently lived abroad, including as a family member advised, in Africa from 2001 to 2003. Cuba from 2005 to 2007, Europe 2009 to 2011, and Asia 2012 to 2013, and traveled to many more, including the Maldives in 2021. As noted above, the defendant has primarily stayed in the United Kingdom since March 2021. With his most recent stay in the United Kingdom lasting almost five months, the defendant has not been in direct communication with his biological family since approximately the middle of 2022. His ties to the United States have thus lessened over time, and indeed, he recently renewed a passport that was not set to expire until October 2029, raising the inference that he is seeking a later expiration date so that he may travel outside the United States more regularly over the next 10 years. In addition, given the borderless nature of the SafeMoon project and blockchain projects more generally, the defendant does not need to remain in the United States to work on SafeMoon or undertake another blockchain related project. The same principle applies to the defendant's access to, di to digital assets. He can access them from anywhere in the world and need to not be in the United States. The nature of the defendant's conduct, as alleged in the indictment, demonstrates that he also poses a danger to the community. The defendant serially defrauded investors and then continually lied to them about his fraudulent conduct and his public statements over the course of more than a year. He diverted tens of millions of dollars to enrich himself. This is not a defendant who maintained lawful employment and committed the instant conduct of and committed the instant conduct uh, on the side. Rather, the defendant relied on these crimes alone to fund his lavish lifestyle. If released, the court can reasonably infer that he will commit other crimes to continue to fund his lifestyle, dissipating victim funds that might otherwise be available for restitution. The evidence in this case is overwhelming. The government expects to prove the defendant's guilt at trial beyond a reasonable doubt through witness testimony, including victim testimony, expert testimony, and voluminous documentary evidence, including blockchain analysis. I would assume here that they're going to be referring to CoffeeZilla's videos because CoffeeZilla did dive really deep into that. The documentary evidence includes communications among the defendant, and his co-conspirators regarding the charged schemes. Those communications include various admissions by the defendant and his co-conspirators, some of which are quoted in the indictment. The government's proof also includes extensive blockchain analysis, evidencing the defendant's misappropriation of millions of dollars of worth of SafeMoon, his laundering and exchange of the SafeMoon into other digital assets, and his ultimate liquidation of the assets and resulting use of fiat currency to fund the purchases cited above. The defendant should be detained to ensure that he faces the charges against him in this case. Indeed, one of the defendants, co-defendant Kyle Nagy, fled the country on or about May 2023, a couple months ago, shortly before the defendant began his most recent five-month stay in the United Kingdom. This defendant should not be allowed the opportunity to do the same. Danger to the community. Finally, the nature and circumstances of the defendant's offense strongly support detention. His intentional and brazen fraud perpetrated over approximately 15 months resulted in more than $300 million in losses to investor victims. And when confronted with misappropriation of assets from the liquidity pools that the defendant had told investors would be, quote, locked, he doubled down on his fraud by lying to investors about what he was doing in public statements. These facts demonstrate that the defendant is a danger to the community. Were he to be released, he could participate in the dissipation of assets that would effectively prohibit victims from obtaining restitution in this case. Accordingly, the record demonstrates that a permanent order of detention should be issued to protect the community from the defendant's further criminal conduct while he awaits trial. Conclusion for the reasons set forth above, the government respectfully requests that the defendant be held without bail pending trial, respectfully submitted Brian Peace, United States Attorney, by Drew G. Rowley, Matthew R. Galliotti, John O. Enright, Assistant U.S. Attorneys. Wow. 
what do you guys think do you think that he is going to be fully convicted of all the crimes three separate charges do you think he'll serve 45 years do you think they're going to give him less time what are your guys' thoughts on this looks incredibly damning the amount of money that's at stake here if you want my opinion maybe you don't want my opinion but i'm going to give it anyways i wouldn't be surprised that he gets 45 years with no bail that does it for this video thank you so much to my patreon supporters double shout out thank you to we love safeman.com victor vegas safeman oz for being higher level patrons thank you to my youtube members for your support as well god bless we'll see you in the next episode